Hi everyone, welcome back to S2CS. I am again back with a new video on switching techniques that is packet switching and circuit switching discussed with advantages and disadvantages. So if you are a new viewer to the channel, after watching the full video, if you feel you have learned something through this, then please don't forget to like, share and subscribe the channel. So let's start. So what are points I am going to discuss today? Switching in computer network, switching techniques that is circuit switching, packet switching. Circuit switching discussed with examples, advantages and disadvantages. Similarly, packet switching discussed with examples, advantages and disadvantages. So let's start. So please stay tuned till the end to understand this full topic. So what is switching in computer network? It's basically is the process of routing data from source to destination through intermediate nodes. Now these intermediate nodes through which this data is being routed is known as switches. Clear with this switching? Next, there are two types of switching techniques that we are going to learn in today's video that is circuit switching, packet switching. So beginning with circuit switching, circuit switching is connection oriented service. Now what do you mean by connection oriented? A dedicated path is established in advance between the source node and destination node to transfer the data. Now how you are going to establish a connection, how you are going to transfer the data that we are going to see in three phases. Circuit switching takes three phases. What it is going to do first, it will be establishing a circuit that is known as setup phase. Second, transfer the data that is known as data transfer phase. And third is disconnect the circuit that is tear down phase. Now, what are the examples? Analog telephone network, public switch tele telephone network. See the example of the circuit switching diagram here. Here I have taken the example of caller and calling. So caller is the source and call is the destination. So a dedicated path has been established between them to transfer the data. Okay. So clear with the circuit switching. Next advantages of circuit switching. The order of data is maintained during the transfer. So no reordering is required. There is no waiting time at switches. So data is transmitted without delay. As it establishes a dedicated channel, the quality of data is improved, which is very important. Yes, suitable for long distance communication. The disadvantages are as it uses dedicated channel path, sometimes it learns leads to inefficiency okay, in terms of resource usage. Sometimes time required to establish a connection may be high. It is more expensive as compared to other switching techniques. More bandwidth is utilized. Routing decisions can't be changed once connection is established. So these are the disadvantages of circuit switching. So you can pause the video and go through each of the points if you want. Next, moving to packet switching. It is connectionless service. There we have seen connection oriented service. But packet switching is connectionless service. That means no dedicated path is to be established in advance. The data is transmitted in the form of packets. Now what are packets? They are the data broken into small pieces of variable length. Packet switching uses store and forward technique while switching the packets. This term I will be explaining you in my coming videos. Packet switching is implemented at data link layer and network layer. So I have taken an easy example that everyone can understand that is internet. So that is the example of packet switching. Now what all happens, how the delivery of packets takes place in packet switching. Each packet consists of source and destination address and sequence number in its header using which they independently travel through the network. So if you don't have destination address or source address or sequence number, how you are going to traverse the data through the network? So we require all this. Then these packets are reassembled at the receiver's end, okay, in proper order. The packets don't arrive in proper order, so we have to reassemble it at the receiver's end. If the correct order of message is received by receiver, then what happens? The acknowledgement message is being sent to the sender. If any packet is lost or corrupted, then a message will be sent that please resend the packet again. So it chooses the possible shortest path okay, to send the message. Clear with the how this packets have been transmitted in this network? Next is the packet switching diagram. Here the same source and the destination. So no dedicated path has been established between these two. Okay, It can traverse in any of the directions. So clear with the packet switching. Next advantages, no call setup is required. Less wastage of resources as the bandwidth is shared among users. 
it is more efficient for data transmission as no dedicated path is required now only we have seen that recording of packets is possible so that if you lose any data you will get a copy of it it is a cost effective technique disadvantages less reliable packet switching requires complex protocols for delivery faces congestion problem as largest large number of packets arrive at same time so it can congest the network if network gets overloaded what will happen sometimes the packet will get discarded or dropped off or sometimes it may be delayed they are unsuitable for applications that can't afford delays in communication so such applications can't use packet switching i hope you are clear with this two term circuit switching and packet switching if you really like the video please press the like button so thank you for watching i will come up with my new video till then bye